Nice night one. Just rolled into camp. We just got a camera out, but man, this is rad! <sighs> Look at all of our lights going and our awnings and our tents. This is what it's all about. I've waited eight months to do this. Here we are. Should we open up our tent? Open up our home, please. Let's do it. Let's open up Let's our home. Let's go cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> Get electrocuted. We just need a guy out. Guy out. Probably I'm excited. Setting up camp for the first time. In the rain. With lightning and some mosquitoes. Have you gotten bit yet? Yeah. Got my first bite before I even got out of the car. Yeah, we can we're so excited. We're so excited. Snuggle oh. buddies. I get to be a little spoon. Tim's on big spoon. She's yeah. Big spoon. We're gonna keep each other warm. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's a good day. I'm glad it's not like 2 a.m. So this is, seems early for us. Yeah, it's uh, it's 8:40. Which is actually a decent time to get in. We can get some dinner and. So you know. pretty soon, this amount of daylight is gonna be 2 in the morning. 840, that's, awesome. that's like early for us. Yeah, we've never been camping at 840. <laughs> what? We're usually rolling in at 10 or 11. Two years ago, we had been in the same campground on our epic winter trip into British Columbia. I was constipated all last night. <coughs> you stayed up because you were constipated? Dude, my stomach hurt so bad. I was like, A, I'm constipated beyond belief, or two, I have appendicitis. <laughs> and a and two? A and two is a result of getting in at 2 a.m. <laughs> the winter had been harsh that year. Just as we pushed into the wilds of BC, a strong winter system set in. Dumping snow continuously throughout our trip. The roads became deep with snow. Fuel mileage plummeted, and the effort to make our miles and keep moving forward became an all-out assault on the road from the team. That's why you're out here is to step into the unknown, right? So, the unknown's gonna happen. Yep. How do you deal with it? The challenges of the road soon took its first toll. Look at that. Oh, I was afraid of that. How long were you throwing that thing? That thing is like beat. That sucks. Yeah. Clay, how you doing? I'm not doing very good. That really ticks me off. That's how I feel. I feel like that's a straight up neglect issue that causes that. It, it would take in one window to be rolled down to listen to your chains and you would have known immediately that something was up. So, it's just careless. It's being careless. I know we're in a hurry, but we break our machines, it costs us tons of money and 
Now it's going to set us back in our before our next trip. So I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated. That shouldn't happen. But it is adventuring, and things like that do happen. So we'll roll on. Okay, so we're right here. Okay, so we've got. Uh, let me just get a ruler on this just to make sure my guess is semi-correct here. Yeah, 27, 27 miles that way to highway. We needed to keep moving. Our heads had to be in the game if we were to get out before we couldn't move at all. Being snowed in was a real possibility. 100 miles into the backcountry roads, conditions reached their worst. Uh, shut your truck off for a sec. This just got serious fast. <laughs> yeah. Throw down some tracks again. No, we we don't think the road has been plowed at all up here. It's gotten got really deep. We need to look at alternate routes before we move any further. Yep. I'm not sure if there is alternate routes other than backwards. Backwards, we don't have fuel for. Yeah, exactly. We're not really following those tracks anymore. That we're so we're at five, eight, six, seven, seven, six. We have two miles. It's, well, estimated at two miles to get to this main road that we've been working to get at. It's not but a main road, it's just a hopefully more plowed road. It's a more plowed road? Hopefully, at this point in time. I, I still say that the best course of action is to pull, push forward. All right, we got a dip and then a climb. Just stay on the road it's gonna here. go. It's a bridge. It's a bridge. <laughs> I don't want to go off of that. No. Uh, we just got buried just after the bridge. We're, we're stuck really bad. You are updated. I have you. Um, what's your assessment? Um, we're going to try to max tracks out, but you guys should just come. Roger that. Set it back to you. We were totally rally driving it. We yeah. were, I was saying, you know, that that three, car. 3,000 3, RPMs, 3,500 RPMs, yeah. kicking up 4,000, all that. It was. Is awesome. Alright, here we go. Cool. That combination right there will get you out of anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think so. Now, two years later, waking up at that very same camp spot, we made our final preparations to move into Canada and on our way to the Alcan Highway. Right now we're filling everything up uh, here on the border before Canada because the gas is a little cheaper and uh, we're going to head on into the deep stuff and have enough gas for everything we want to do. So. We sat at a local diner and made our final route plan and crossed the first of six border crossings during this expedition. British Columbia is an incredible place of beauty and adventure. Little did we know we will have another date with fate in this province. Nearing the Yukon border, conversations moved to deeper matters as the team began to grow closer. Were you born and raised in Colorado? Yeah, um, outside of Castle Rock, we had a horse range. I was about nine, but when I was 14, is when it started going downhill. Not having anything to do. Found things to do. Right. That occupied a lot of time and brain cells. Right. And, yeah. Sure. So that lasted for four years of experimenting, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> trying things. What brought you out of that? A girl. Oh yeah? Yeah. I asked her out and she said yes, which she probably shouldn't have because at the time I was still selling stuff and doing stuff and you know. But 
She brought me to church and I wore a suit because I thought that's what you did yeah. when you went to church. Sweet. <laughs> no, only one in a suit sweating, <laughs> looking like a goober. So yeah. Um, immediately left church that first day and went and smoked pot to try to like calm down. Yeah. Because I you know, that was really uncomfortable. Yeah. But after a while it started working on me. Like I quit. I just couldn't smoke anymore. I had smoke and I just wouldn't feel it. I was just like, I'm, I'm done. Uh -huh. I don't know what it was. It was the most crazy realization. You know, the, the moment where you just realize that there's something more that you're meant for in life. Yeah. That that moment hit me like a ton of bricks. And after that, I didn't smoke pot ever again. Didn't smoke a cigarette ever again. Didn't drink ever again. Wow. Four years smoking a pack a day, I was done. Wow. Done, done. So. There is something about the road. When you spend enough time traveling together, you seem to bond. This journey in particular, because this road is truly a road of roads. Most people, if they thought of Alaska at all, thought of it as a cold, rugged wasteland of little value except for its gold, fur, and fisheries. Now, suddenly, it seemed to have considerable additional value both to us and to the Japanese. And its strategic position was not comforting. The great Japanese air and naval base at Paramushiro was only 750 miles from Attu. Attu was only 1,200 miles from the mainland of Alaska. There was no overland connection across the wilderness of northwestern Canada. The Canadian government had already carved out a series of five airports between Edmonton, Alberta, and Whitehorse, Yukon Territory. And there were other fields in Alaska between the Yukon border and Fairbanks. With Canada's consent, the United States War Department decided to build a military highway from Rails End at Dawson Creek, British Columbia, to Fairbanks, Alaska, to link up and supply these airfields and to provide emergency access to Alaska for troops and materiel. This highway would extend roughly 1,500 miles, about the distance from Washington to Denver. We finally reached the start of the Elkan Highway in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. I'm showing how to play how to put the basket. Oh, thanks, so teaching Clay, teaching Clay some lessons. We're going inside to meet the first guy to reach the North Pole building or the northern side of the highway that goes all the way up to Prudhoe Bay. I think his name's Dick. Now what's going on? Well, I, I heard you were the man to meet. I am. How are you doing? Deb, Deb Clay yeah. Croft. Who? Clay. Clay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What were they building the roads for? The uh, roads were built basically because uh, uh, the Japs and them had submarines. And the Germans come over never, and loosen islands along the coast. Uh -huh. So they built an inland road. Otherwise, they could uh, uh, ship just by shipping. All they had to do was keep sinking their or oil ships or whatever, they couldn't know how to couldn't do it. And that's why they built the last hour. Money was no yeah, other. Yeah. All the contractors had a cost plus job. Wow. And, uh, oh, and it went. Every little ways, they they built an airstrip so that they had access to fuel and everything else ah, to get done. So they would resupply with those that's airstrips. Right. And they were scared to death of the bears. And man, oh man, if they ever heard about a bear anywhere, there'd be 10 or 13 together. And you couldn't get them out of that camp. They were just scared to death of the bears. And them trucks they sent, a lot of them didn't even have heaters in them when winter hit. And them guys in there damn near froze to death. And oh yeah, boy, the Americans really done You never know who you will run into on these journeys. Sometimes the people you meet are true gems of history. The locals helped us plan our campsite for the night. An old airstrip up the way would work nicely. I know you can only see it from here. <laughs> We're going up here? We're going up somewhere this way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, it's legend. Yeah, it's hungry. Yeah. Two hours later, we found ourselves pillaging down an old runway soon to come in contact with our only known enemy of the trip. I'm thinking, you, this is like mosquito nightmare right here. 
I need to run away. Look at that. I have never, I, and I have been in a lot of Yukon territory, and I haven't seen we it like this We need to not be by water. The like ground is back the way we came. There were spots on the left side. All right, we're camped at the end of this abandoned airstrip. We could have either gone to higher ground or move away from water, but it's been raining so much. Oh, man. Where'd that go? It's been raining so much that we're gonna find them everywhere. So oh my gosh! We're just we're just gonna make camp. <laughs> I'm getting covered. <laughs> look at look at this. I just inhaled one. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there are so many mosquitoes. You Thank will you. not win. I'm caught. That's good. I want in. <laughs> Now's the time to get in the mental state of you can't beat them. You just have to. You can't join them. You just have to accept them. It's supposed to be epic mosquitoes of all time in the in Alaska and the Yukon. I heard they're sold out on bug spray. So, nothing you can do about it. Seance. Perish in the flame of citronella. Lover of all things. Oh, uh, the candles on the gas cherries, just saying. Where are they? Oh, that's smart. <laughs> Good call. Let's not blow us up. How about that? Are you up for it, Rhonda? Yep. Game face? Game face. Had to whine a minute, but I'm done now. I've never seen that thing before. I don't know what that bug is. What is that bug? He got it. Here, show, show it to the camera. Oh, it is a bee. Cow. Look at that stinger. Well, uh, that's it's like my son. He gets stung and he just, he's like, oh, I had her. And he goes back to catching them. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Now that we're done cooking, yep. the mosquitoes have left. Problem. I don't know. Mm. Rhonda, great job. You like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. Very much. I feel amazing. Ow! <laughs> oh. The four days of hard driving had begun to take its toll. We needed something to take the edge off. Laird Hot Springs had our GPS's destination setting. Sometimes road weariness gets the best of us all. Grow up. <laughs> Speaking with a retired forest ranger about the area, he suggested our next campsite. No bikinis Jeff has a bikini. All right, man. It was to be 20 some kilometers off the main highway at the historic Smith River airstrip, a significant strip during the construction of the highway some 70 years ago. All right, as we're traveling in here, um, I have counted nine, and I think we just passed the tenth very fresh, very recent pile of bear scat. Looks like this is a highway for bears. There's a good chance we might see one tonight. Uh, we're actually, for the second night in a row, sleeping in an abandoned air base. This one, obviously heavily used by big aircraft. Just over here, there is a massive swath, probably 200 yards wide by a good mile long. They were bringing in heavy equipment here. It's all grown in. And where, we're si where I'm sitting right now is actually one of the bunkers that those soldiers used while that air base was operating. And to me, this is fascinating. I love this stuff. To know that someone used to walk in here, that commands and generals were giving orders and people were following them out, missing their loved ones at home. It was all happening right here. And now the winters have pretty much taken this building since 1945. And uh, this is what's left of it. But what a cool piece of history. Yes. 
So, it's about 12.30 in the morning, as you can tell by the sunlight, and we're shooting some interviews, and we're hearing a bear over there. And he seems to be fairly close by and grunting quite a bit, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. We might have to post a man. We're just gonna walk around, just, you know, within our defensible area and take a look to see if we can find if there's a bear out there. A lot of times a bear can sound like a moose, but this sounds like a bear to me. So anyway, we've got big lights. First initial is a bear banger, then we can't get it to go away. We got a bean bag or we got rubber bullets. And uh, beyond that, it's retreating back here, possibly getting in vehicles or having to use more lethal force if necessary. But we're hoping to shoe the bear versus make him mad. So we'll see. We just need to do a quick check around here make sure that we're safe in this area and shoo them off if we can without doing something stupid. Stupid? Stupid. Just heard it again over here. We still hear it over here, which means it's A, probably nothing to be worried about, or two, it's a bear that doesn't care, which is something to be worried about. But there's nothing more, we're not going in there for sure. We just need to hang back here where we have good visual and uh, just do our thing, take care of our smells and uh, hope for the best. So it is currently one in the morning. So it's time to go to bed. We're tired if we can't go to bed. <laughs> After a short night's rest, we headed back to the main road. Not even one mile from camp, we met our nighttime friend. There he is. He's coming. I don't know. He doesn't care. We <laughs> talked to we talked to several people that said they had they have never seen a grizzly bear in their life. Oh yeah, that guy at the yeah, parking yeah, lot. Yeah. I've lived up here 15 years, never seen one. Lived here, never seen. Wait, one. he said since '86. Is he still out? He said he's been here since '86. What yeah. luck? Is he still out? No, he he went back. In the he way. just kept walking. I've never seen one before. That's Isn't that so crazy? Cool. That that dude's a lot. That was a grizz, right? Yeah. Seriously? Oh God. It was awesome seeing that grizzly. Seeing an animal like that sets in stone that you are in the wild. I can say that at this point we are all settled into the trip, mentally ready for the next six weeks of exploration and travel. What's ahead, the road only knows.
look silly. And go! Oh, spine! Oh, so good. Oh, my back! Oh, dude, man. Compress. What happened? That was so good. I jumped and man, that shot. Use it, boy! The old man got hurt!